everyone, today I just want to talk about something that is a little overlooked in Baroque Edition because, well, it's not very useful, and that is mob conveyors. Those are simply contraptions that ignore that, push along mobs, and, uh, well, transport them from A to B. And they are fairly interesting, but they are kind of limited on Baroque Edition, and I'm going to go into why. Now, this particular model right here, and another one that I'm going to show you later, are 6.6 .6 blocks per second. And I believe that is about the fastest you can go with mob conveyors in Baroque Edition. Because in Java Edition, you may be able to get up to 20 blocks per second, I think that's what I saw. But it's okay, because mob conveyors are not very useful anyway, and it's still a cool thing to have. And I will of course show you some neat applications for those. So the basic idea of these mob conveyors right here is that there are pistons that get pushed out of the wall and then they extend, which pushes along mobs. And that is done alternated between top and bottom, which of course means that it will only work for mobs higher than one block. That means most baby mobs won't work for this. So mobs like sheep or cows do in fact work because they are taller than one block. So as you can see, they do get pushed along just fine by this mob conveyor right here. This particular design that I made can be mirrored, and that means you can basically have a two-wide shaft that pushes mobs along. Yeah, and all the circuit is on that side, but there is also another circuit which is simpler and it is less intense on resources, which I will also show you. But yeah, this is uh, my design. It does work on sheep. Whoa, what a coincidence. It's got so many black sheep of once. But yeah, like I said, it works on mobs that are taller than one block. You can see all of those do get pushed along just fine. These mob conveyors are required to start one block before the actual mobs fall in, because of course this piston right here needs to get extended that way, and then push along the first mob, and yeah, you saw that before maybe, I left that block away and that made them walk out and all that, but that won't happen of course if you have something like this, and there you go, all these creepers get pushed along perfectly. So this may seem completely useless to you, and you are partially right, there is basically no known uses for this sort of contraption, but there's actually one interesting use that I saw, which also gains increased value in the next 1.16 update because we are losing a handful of mob moving methods. So, this right here is an example for a fortress farm. I will link Dr. Jan Science video on fortress farm down in the description because it is very interesting and you definitely do need to check it out. But there is sand pushers used in that video. And as you may know, sand pushers require gravity block stacking and that is removed in 1.16. So, this is what someone else came up with. It's blank from the Tech Rock Discord, so that's pretty cool. And well, this is pretty much the same conveyor belt, but instead of using observers being pushed along, there is just, well, repeaters on the other side that powered in parallel. And that is cheaper, but it is, of course, not memorable. But that's not really a problem, because being memorable is very limited in use. So, the way this fortress farm works is that, of course, we have the hard-coded spawning spots right on here, the chest cards are just a block magma cube spawns, and then there is the glass, which of course index the insta push mechanics and also prevents pigment spawns, which is important to not have any baby pigment because those would actually not work in the mob conveyor. But enough talking, let's just turn this on for a second. It is back there. And well, we have one of my trident killer designs, and we can just turn the entire thing on. It will send a signal all the way back there. And the mob conveyor will push along all the mobs and push them into, well, the trident killer where they get killed off. And all of this runs on a clock and that means that new mobs will be able to spawn and will get pushed along. As you can see right there, they all just spawned. This is pretty cool because this does give us an alternate solution to using sand pushers because, well, sand pushers may or may not be a thing in 1.16. You can make them in 1.16 with bubble columns, but I haven't been able to make them as reliable as I wanted to yet. 
But uh, yeah, it's definitely a thing to use these mob conveyors, especially for fortress farms. And I think that is one great use for it. There might be other uses that I'm not very aware of, but that's all up to you to find out. So once again, Dr. Gen Sign, very cool fortress farm, link in description. And Blank from the Attack Rock Discord, thank you very much as well, because this is pretty awesome. And uh, I wouldn't have thought of covering mob conveyors before that in the first place. Also, can we just take a moment to appreciate how cool it looks when these mobs just get pushed all into one spot and then, well, land on in a Trine Killer? It's really awesome. So, I'm just going to very briefly show you how to build my model, it should be simple enough, and for Blanc's model that is technically cheaper but cannot be mirrored, um, it's pretty easy to figure out, it's pretty much the same thing as mine right here, but, well, it is a little different because of course you have the repeaters on the other side. So, for mine you would just have some sticky pistons facing outwards like this, and you would have solid blocks in between, then you would have more blocks like this, and pistons on top. This is because we do need a space for there to be a floor and the observers will of course power through that floor. And uh, well, of course you do need these pistons right here that will push. And after placing repeaters on three ticks in between those blocks, that is also why this conveyor is 6.6 .6 blocks per second, because it takes three redstone ticks for two blocks, three game ticks per block on average, which of course is 6.6 .6 blocks per second, considering that there's 20 game ticks. And then we can just fill in the gaps in between those observers, as well as here, and there as well. On the back side here we can fill everything in as well and then we would just have some more sticky pistons facing this direction which look all like this. We can have some observers facing downwards, not sideways, we would have them facing downwards so that they of course power all the pistons and a gap is not necessary here because of course we don't explicitly need a ceiling but we do need a floor that we can just fill in all of that. And on the back side we can just have a line right here, then some solid blocks, and rest on dust on top so that the repeaters do power both of the pistons, and then again in between all those gaps, repeaters on three ticks. Then for the proper offset you just add a block at the beginning, and you add a repeater on two ticks, then you can just hook both of those up, it's pretty simple, you just have some redstone dust, and then you can, well, hook it up wherever you want. I'm just gonna do something like this, and then have a button right here. That should be the entire thing working, except of course that we need a floor, and you can just add in that floor. And one thing you do need to make sure you have is immovable blocks at the end, because these pistons do receive a pulse when they get retracted as well, and that can mess many things up, including this piston right here pushing all of those, and that would not be very fun. So just make sure to have immovable blocks at the end, and as you can see, that does work. We can just test this out for a second. We are going to fill all of that in and make sure that the mobs cannot walk out from here. By the way, you should not use this mob conveyor with one tall mobs anyway, so that one block gap won't be an issue. Let's just finish that off and let's try it out. So we can have some creepers. Let's get some creepers and spawn them in. And it works just fine. Everything gets pushed to that end, and yeah, that's pretty cool. Of course, you can expand this as far as you want, but you do need this type of circuit at the beginning and removal blocks at the end. Oh, and if you want a two white shaft that will convey mobs from A to B, you can simply mirror this, of course have a separate floor for that one, that would be two white, and then just build the exact same thing on the other side, it's fairly simple. And just in case you're wondering, no this does not work well for players and that is because of two reasons. The first is that player movement is client controlled, so that means if you are on a server, it will completely ignore what well, the server tells you and the client does basically dictate most of the movement, so there will be of course some sort of desynchronization which will mess up things. 
And well, even in single player, there is of course an internal server. So the game always runs on an internal server. Or well, if you are playing on an online server, it's not your game that dictates actions, but well, it's still your client that dictates it. So that's why this does not work well for players and you don't really want to use those anyway for player transportation because there are much faster ways. Even piston bolts which are not so optimal are still faster than this but honestly I would recommend just using boats and ice for transportation. So, while I low-key think that these things are pretty cool, they are pretty much useless except for the Shown Fortress form, to which of course there is all links in the description. And uh, yeah, I hope you did enjoy this video. Make sure to subscribe because there is more interesting stuff like this on my channel. And uh, well, I hope you enjoyed this and bye!